Hello there, folks. This is Mark Smith with Family Tree Counseling Associates. And this is my first recorded video after our live stream show last Tuesday. And I have to say it's a lot easier to record a video just by yourself without the live feed and somebody there to monitor and guests coming in and out. But that was sort of a cool energy and I want to invite everybody this coming Tuesday night at 8.30 Eastern Time PM until 10 o'clock PM. Uh, Karen Smith is going to be a guest on the show, one of our new associates, as well as Renda Hall and maybe others. Mr. Pauly will make an appearance. He's right over there. Um, he's not going to say hey, hi right now, I don't think. But please join us on the live feed Tuesday night. <clears throat> the, um, the title of today's video is How to Become Superman or Superwoman in Your Narcissistic Abuse Recovery. And I have 10 points. I might as well call this 10 ways to become Superman, Superman or Superwoman. And the first one is to recognize that it may not be time yet for you to become Superman or Superwoman. Oh, by the way, I'm uh, wearing my Superman shirt. <laughs> I got up this morning and I just wanted to wear something different. And I put my Superman shirt on and then one of my friends sent me a Vince Lombardi quote that I'm going to be using in this presentation. I was sitting in the hot tub minding my own business, really not consciously trying to come up with an idea for a video. And it just struck me, the energy from this quote that I'll get to in just a little bit, that <clears throat> I feel not every day, frankly not at this moment, I'm sort of tired, it's been a long weekend, it's been a long day, but I do feel like Superman, not in a arrogant, I think I'm indestructible way, but in a way that if, if you can survive and thrive after narcissistic abuse that was just god awful and brutal and it's only 16 and a half months ago and you're flying around with a cape now dude you're superman or superwoman i i showed this in a previous video but i feel so strongly about it i went out and got tattooed with a big superman logo on my arm but it might just be three months after your shattering or six months or nine months or a year. And at those dates, I wasn't a good candidate for supermanhood. Um, after three months, it was about, am I gonna live or die? Am I gonna take my own life? Am I, at six months, it was, do I have enough togetherness and healing to continue on in my career as a therapist. So it may not quite be time for you to get little stretches of superhuman powers, um, and that's okay. If somebody would have suggested to me that someday in 16 and a half months, my business would be exploding. I would feel good most days, great most days. I would rarely think of my narcissistic abuser. I would have known that I kicked her ass <laughs> in the whole interchange. And I turned, you know, rotten lemons into tasty lemonade. If somebody would have told me that, I, I wouldn't have believed them. You know, the tattoo on my other arm. Um, it has the word courage and it's not because 
I had a super abundance at the time. It's just I had to remind myself every day how much courage that it took. So it might be time for you to be kind to yourself, be gentle with yourself, and not expect super high performance. The second point of the 10 is in order to become Superman, um, you've got to be extremely disciplined and focused. This is the Vince Lombardi quote. A man can be as great as he wants to be. A woman can be as great as she wants to believe, wants to be. If you believe in yourself, and you have the courage and the determination, the dedication, the competitive drive, and if you are willing to sacrifice the little things in life and pay the price for the things that are worthwhile, it can be done. I'm going to read that quote again. A man can be as great as he wants to be. If you believe in yourself and have the courage, the determination, the dedication, the competitive drive, and if you're willing to sacrifice the little things in life and pay the price for the things that are worthwhile, it can be done. Vince Lombardi. Vince Lombardi, folks, uh, is probably considered the second greatest football coach in the history of football. I think there's a consensus now that Bill Belichick of the New England Patriots is probably the, the finest coach in the history of the NFL football. But Vince Lombardi of the Green Bay Packers was a great coach. That quote applies to your narcissistic abuse syndrome recovery process. You can heal as much and as deep and as fast as you're determined to heal. Now you can't can't get over it in a matter of weeks. It's it's a it's a year or two or three long process. But my point is, and Vince Lombardi's point is to be a great football player, and he didn't even mention football in the quote, to be a great football player, you gotta give up the little things and you have to have courage and determination and dedication and competitive drive and be willing to sacrifice the little things. Um, I got on the scale yesterday and realized that I'd lost 20 pounds. And unlike the 53 pounds I lost after my shattering, um, this 20 pounds came off with a plan. I had gone in to see my, my cardiologist couple months ago and I said I was concerned about the 20 pounds I'd put on and he said my friend uh, quit eating carbohydrates and I did I just I just I stay away from bread and cereals and just any sugar no sugar for me no thank you and the weight has just fallen off of me because we people who are in narcissistic abuse syndrome recovery, we have to have the discipline of an Olympic training athlete. We have to live disciplined lives. And that 20, that 20 pounds was cramping my style. Um, it made my pants not fit right. So in order to heal, as much as you need to heal, you need to get up every day and do meditation. You need to practice yoga. You need to exercise four or five times a week. You need to find a good EMDR therapist. You need to go to talk therapy. You need to get enough sleep. There's a good one. You need to eat well. If you're eating a lot of sugar and snarfing a lot of pizzas in the middle of the night and putting on a lot. I was, <laughs> last night, my girlfriend and I uh, went to a Chinese restaurant and it was a buffet and neither of us 
um, had really paid much attention to food in a while. But we were hungry, and it was a really good buffet, and we sort of overate a little bit. Uh, we were joking that they were going to have to use a world barrel, <laughs> world barrels out of there. We didn't really eat that much, but there was there was a man there who was a good-looking man and a young man, and he just had the look of somebody who'd let himself go, he'd let himself go to the buffets too too many times, and. Um, my daughters would say I'm mean for saying that, but um, I could tell that, that he used to be like the high school quarterback, coolest guy in the school, and, and, and now he's, he, he's just let himself go. And that's fine in life if you let yourself go, but if you're going to get better and become Superman or Superwoman in your narcissistic abuse recovery process, you have to be disciplined. You cannot put on a bunch of weight. You cannot lay on the couch. You cannot stay in bed all day. You, you need to pray. You need to involve yourself in 12-step work. You need to have the vulnerability to be able to cry your eyes out, cry your guts out. You need to watch a lot of YouTube videos. You need to listen to a lot of books. I'm cutting the grass after this, and I downloaded two books that were recommended, one by a soon-to-be patient or client and one by a current client, because my mind is constantly hungry to get better and to learn and to feed my recovery process. So I'm going to cut grass and, and work on my recovery at the same time. That's, that's really a good use of time. And you need to really involve yourself with your recovery friends if, if you're going to have the kind of discipline that is necessary to be a champion. Uh, when I say becoming Superman or Superwoman, I mean becoming a champion at your recovery process to where people stand back a year from now and go, wow. How on earth did you do it? You went from being destroyed. Chinese lady in the background. I think she's Chinese. You went from being destroyed to having joy and having some swag and, and having some uh, uh, positive energy. Um, the, the third point about how to become Superman is to be vulnerable and to be psychologically open. Uh, I think it was that same future client sent me a quote from a guy named Pima uh, Chun Chowdron, Pima Chowdron, uh, from the book When Things Fall Apart. <clears throat> the quote is this. The most fundamental aggression to ourselves, the most fundamental harm we can do to ourselves is to remain ignorant by not having the courage and the respect to really look at ourselves honestly and gently. The most fundamental aggression to ourselves, the most fundamental harm we can do to ourselves is to remain ignorant by not having the courage and the respect to look at ourselves honestly but gently. That's a great quote right there, folks. <clears throat> Several times this week in my practice, I was confronted with clients who were there purportedly to uh, heal and grow and change. And, um, but they, uh, unfortunately, um, all my clients don't, don't always have that ability to be honest with themselves. And, and many times it's because they don't know how to be gentle with themselves. If, if you're really honest with all your ugliness and your warts and your flaws, you might go from, from 
being oblivious and arrogant to being shame-based and feeling like a piece of crap. So to keep from feeling like, like a piece of crap, you become somebody who doesn't have ears to hear and isn't able to discern and to learn what the universe and what God and what your friends and what your spouse are trying to teach you. Maybe even your therapist is trying to teach you a little bit of something and you're not able to listen. The fourth thing you need to do if you're going to become Superman or Superwoman in your recovery is to awaken. And then in your awoken state, give up your victim mentality. Um, yeah, like I said, I had several people in who were just mired in victim mentality and defensiveness. And they believe if they have a problem, they didn't cause it, and it's not fair. And they're there to really complain about the bad guy who done it. Excuse me. I don't know if other YouTube makers drink beverages and their thing. Might get thirsty every once in a while. And what I try to get people to see is our lives are made by us. Even this narcissistic character who wounded you, you, you recruited that person. They, they did not victimize you, my friends. They didn't have the power to victimize you without your full consent and cooperation. You invited them into your life. Now, now some of us, I mean, maybe it was your parents or a rapist or a criminal, but most of us, it's our spouses that we chose. So um, when you eliminate victim mentality, you also eliminate the desire to exact revenge and revenge is for victim people who are not enlightened and who don't realize that you know if you go through a painful situation consult with that fella and that gal in the mirror and ask them how it happened and get to work on them and it'll give you all the power in the world to make a lovely and a happy life Somebody during the live feed um, had this uh, message that came across, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. That mentality of an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, makes the whole world blind and toothless. And I guess that's a quote from Mahatma Gandhi. We can, we can forgive. We can understand that nobody has the power to victimize us. And life is about our own choices. Number five thing you need to know if you're going to become Superman is I'm going to make a reference to a previous video that I did. It's probably the video that I like the least of any one of the 220 something I've ever made. Um, it was called the 15 ways I defeated my narcissist. But it's our number two ranked video of all of our videos right now in terms of current popularity. I didn't like it. Um, I was basically talking about a movie called Shattered. There's two versions of the movie. One is Shattered, one is uh, Crush a Butterfly on a Wheel. And what that phrase means is it, it's, it's taken from a poem, a famous poem. And crushing a butterfly on a wheel, what it means is most people don't think that the pain that we went through in our narcissistic abuse should be all that big of a deal. I actually got a message on YouTube last week by somebody, some purporting to be a man, um, and they said, Mark, why would her cheating on you hurt so bad? 
you shouldn't be counseling people. You should quit before you hurt somebody. <laughs> and, of course, what I went through, it wasn't really about cheating. It was about the terror of waking up and knowing that the person laying next to you in bed for six and a half years had perpetrated a fraud upon you the entire time and that she actually, you'd never even met her. And then you look back and, and you realize how she's been using you for money and physically abusive. And then you add the, all the horrific cheating on top of it. When you didn't see it coming, that, that would have killed most people, what, what I went through last year. Um, so people don't understand, and I know I'm preaching to the choir, they don't understand how much emotional violence takes place in narcissistic abuse. And when I say in order to become Superman or Superwoman, you need to crush a butterfly on a wheel, what I'm saying is you need to be mighty courageous. When I was in the treatment center last or late June, early July, I had this necklace that looked like a Mandinka warrior necklace. And when it was time to do some intensive group therapy, I would put a skull cap on and my Mandinka warrior necklace and I'd go to work. I felt like a warrior. We are not people to be trifled with. We are uh, we recovering people from narcissistic abuse. We're powerful. If you corner us in a corner and try to kill us, you're liable to get bit. You're liable to sustain a great deal of damage, and it'll be your fault if you if you're foolish enough to try it. And if you mess with us, then you mess with us at your own peril. I'm trying to instill a sense of empowerment in you folks. And the, the, what I didn't like about the video is I went back and I talked about a time period where I was victim -y and reactive and raw and reacting to my uh, uh, PTSD. And I did some sort of raw, ugly things. But my point was, um, when people do emotional violence to you, even if you look back to a time in your life when you were being reactive, at least they walked away with a bruise. What happened was you weren't crazy, you weren't insane, you weren't a criminal. Some vicious animal cornered you and tried to take your life, they tried to take you out, they tried to bite you on the throat. I was watching a football re uh, replay and Peyton Manning was early in his career and he goes, come on guys, we're gonna step on their throats. And, and that's what these, these horrific monsters try to do. They try to step on our throats. And sometimes, uh, frankly, I know some of you guys don't like me cussing, but if, 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 you're, if you come from the stuff in your DNA where you're gonna become Superman or Superwoman, these folks walk away wishing they, they ought not have fucked with us. That's what I'm talking about, crush a butterfly on a wheel. Number six, recognize what your kryptonite is. Superman was good, but he, he had to stay away from that kryptonite or he was in trouble. Because as soon as he got next to that kryptonite, he became very weak, started to die. Uh, my kryptonite is mean, crazy borderline chicks. <laughs> uh, I seem to have a, an affinity for them in reenacting my family of origin stuff. And so I'm trying to be sober-minded and uh, have boundaries and practice self-care. But you, you sort of like who you like. And uh, I'm... I'm uh, trying to identify the borderlines before any damage comes my way. Um, I was uh, offered, uh, uh, somebody reached out and offered me sort of a, uh, a fancy, cool trip around the world kind of a thing, a place to stay at least. And I, I gathered my treatment team around and they said, dude, that's kryptonite. That's uh, that's probably a borderline woman reeling you in. You better stay away from that. So I did. So 
recognize what your kryptonite is. Is it alcohol, drugs, sex, denial, spending, arrogance, uh, match.com? What's your kryptonite? Kryptonite will take you out. Um, if you don't take good care of you, if you're not disciplined like Vince Lombardi says, if you don't do the meditation, do the exercise. I was in a particularly bad place, a bad point last Saturday. And I didn't feel good. My body chemistry was off. My house was a mess. I, I asked a friend to come over and help me straighten things up. And I, I hit my gym in my basement really hard. And I, I got a really good workout in. And my body, body chemistry changed with the one workout. And then I, I made a video where I went on my rant about psychology today. And my, my week was really turned around by practicing discipline and self-care. Be careful with your kryptonite. Number seven is, is be patient. Learn to be gracious with yourself. You're going to have some pretty darn non-Superman-like moments, and that's okay. Um, I've had a Superman week, but I had some moments where I felt like I was in a fetal position sucking my thumb, but I'm still Superman. Number eight, believe in your Superman-ness. Believe in your Superwoman-ness. Um, I, I was real tired on Wednesday. I had my own personal therapy session. I was exhausted. I had two sessions in front of me, and I was like texting a friend saying, I don't even know if I can do it. I might need to cancel. I'm, I'm really whipped. And the first session was really good. It just you know activated my gifts. And the second session was brilliant. And I had stuff coming out of me that was just rock and roll Hall of Fame stuff, man. It was solid. And it was like my gift was operating. And I left going, why didn't I believe in Superman? Because he was flying around the room and using x-ray vision. <laughs> I mean, Believe in your Superman-ness. Believe in your Superwoman-ness. Believe how far you've come. My friend said, told you. Dude, believe in yourself. I told you that you were going to kill it. Number nine, let your joy emerge. Um, one of the most joyful things in my life is playing basketball. And um, a couple times this week, um, I've... I've played some good basketball and knocked down some three-point shots and um, got on some winning teams. And um, the dryer um, really got a good workout and a good sweat up and walked away just with a big smile on my face. Um, let your joy emerge. Um, people are going to notice the smile in your face and the, 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 the skip in your step and your swagger. And it's not arrogance, it's joy. Sorry for the lighting, it's getting a little dark here. We should wrap up. The last thing, if you're gonna become Superman or Superwoman in your narcissistic abuse recovery process is lean on your tribe. Um, this week in, in our group supervision meeting, the hotshot owner and leader of Family Tree Counseling curled up in a ball in a fluffy blanket on the couch and cried. I told my staff, dudes, I'm so whipped and I'm so tired. Don't even come over here and sit on the couch because I'm laying down in the couch in our meeting because I'm a mess. And um, came to be my turn to check in in our community and, and I, I had a good long cry and um, basically told them what was going on and get, gave them they gave me some good feedback and I left the meeting repaired not completely repaired but I left in much better condition than I arrived that's what I'm saying so recognize it may not be time for you to be superman or superwoman lead an extraordinarily disciplined life in the 
disciplines, disciplines of our recovery process that we all know work. Be vulnerable and psychologically open. Waken up and know, have that epiphany that your life is your responsibility and there are no victims in life. There are no victims in marriage or are no victims in dating. Um, have the fortitude and the fire in your belly to crush a butterfly on a wheel if necessary. Recognize what your kryptonite is. Be patient and gracious and forgiving and kind and loving with yourself. Believe in yourself. Believe in your gifts. Believe in your superman-ness and your superwoman-ness. Let your joy emerge. You know, there's some times uh, after sessions this week where, where clients left and, and some of my my gifts as a professional came out and they left and I was just like, woo, awesome. You know, it's just because I know, I know that somebody got helped and, and it was a great joy to see the lights turn on in their face. And then lastly, lean on your tribe. Lean on me when you're not strong. I'll be around, the song says. So if you practice these 10 things one day, might be six months from now, might be three months from now, might be a year from now, might be two years from now, somebody will come along and say, dude, do this. You be rocking. You Superman, you Superwoman. I'm, I'm digging the energy. Hey, if you haven't been subscribing to our YouTube channel, channel you should probably do that. I would appreciate that. And remember to, to tune in on Tuesday evening at 8.30 p.m. That dryer's in there going crazy. And also, I have got uh, six books that are available for purchase for just $4.95 on our website, familytreecounseling.com. I'm going to go cut the grass before it gets dark. Thank you for watching, and God bless.